The International Finance Corporation and four other institutions have partnered with the Senegalese vaccine manufacturer in an effort to advance the manufacturing process of COVID-19 vaccines right here on the African continent. Under the terms of this agreement, the five institutions will support large-scale investments in vaccine production by the Institut Pasteur in Dakar, alongside other support measures. Now, this new manufacturing plant should also reduce Africa's near 99% dependence on vaccine imports and strengthen future pandemic resilience on the continent. The total cost of the project is anticipated to be around $200 million. According to the WHO, to date, only 1% of the African population has been fully vaccinated against COVID-19. All right, then let's explore the business of vaccine manufacturing with Dr. Ahmed Oguel Omer. He's the Deputy Director of the Africa Centers for Disease Control and he joins us live on the program tonight. Dr. Oguel, thank you very much for your time this evening. So let's start with what uh, one of the flagship projects that have been carried out by the, the African Union, the monthly rollout of batches of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine to AU member states formally started today. Walk us through the broad highlights of the distribution plan. How many shots are going out each month and to which countries? Um, thank you for having me. Um, the distribution indeed started today, and um, uh, it will go in phases uh, between this month and the end of the year, and we will cover all the countries that have uh, signed up to the AVAT platform uh, that is run by Africa CDC, Africa Union, and Afrexim Bank. Um, this month of August, we will distribute 6.4 million doses um, and we will progressively um, increase that until we reach the 120 million uh, doses mark by the end of the year. So the final stages, as I understand it, of, of this vaccines manufacturing is happening at uh, a facility owned by Aspen Pharmacare in South Africa. But are there any other facilities on the continent that could conceivably handle this kind of workload, if not now, perhaps in six months or nine months time? Indeed, yes. Um, our projection is that um, apart from this particular facility in uh, South Africa, we are working with uh, other countries uh, so that we can have at the very least uh, seven or so um, different manufacturing facilities having the full capacity to be able to manufacture COVID-19 vaccines on the continent. What, what needs to be done to get to that point? Uh, because, I mean, on, on paper, looking at the statement, you know, we say we're, we're doing the fill and finish process within the continent, but what do we need to scale up this process in terms of manpower and in terms of money? Of the many things that um, are required for that to happen, three are key. The first one is um, to get... Um, the owner of uh, an intellectual property, uh, the owner of a vaccine uh, to accept for manufacturing to be done here on the continent. Um, second is uh, to ensure that uh, the facility uh, that has been picked can actually be able uh, to uh, make the production in decent enough numbers. And third is um, access to the market. Uh, this means that uh, the vaccines that are going to be produced can easily be able to access by the African market and beyond. So what needs to be done uh, is known and uh, the timelines are such that we can be able to get uh, these vaccines being manufactured on the continent within the next uh, three or so months. Uh, quick follow up on that. With respect to the question of access to markets, uh, what sort of barriers uh, are in place with regard especially to trade policy or tax or tariffs or imports and that sort of thing? What sort of barriers often do countries face in trying to import vaccines across borders? Um, uh, barriers can be divided into two. One is production barriers and then second is uh, market access barriers. Uh, production barriers, uh, we already discussed some, and that is the facility needs to be in place. And uh, policy within the country also need to be supportive of um, uh, manufacturing of uh, sensitive products like um, uh, a vaccine. Um, secondly, within that first bracket is uh, capacity, the technical know-how. You need people who know how to run the machines. You need people who can be able to ensure uh, that the whole manufacturing process is uh, solid, is clean, and is healthy. Now, the market barrier is one that um, uh, we are already working on as Africa CDC and Africa Union, uh, because when you manufacture, you need to get your products to be bought. 
uh, the current regime where uh, a few institutions are the ones that are buying most of the vaccines uh, is not good for Africa. But using the platform of the Africa continental free trade area, we are going to ensure that whatever is manufactured on the continent has a ready market uh, through that platform. So governments are not necessarily the buyers or rather the bulk buyers of these vaccines, at least under current setup. It's usually um, other institutions like UNICEF, for example, um, looking at the broader vaccine market, they tend to buy up most of the vaccines that come into the market across Africa, isn't it? That's the current regime. Uh, it needs to be reviewed so that um, our vaccines that are manufactured on the continent can be able to have a ready market. 1.3 billion people is a good market and it can be able to sustain uh, uh, several manufacturing facilities on the continent, so long as we address the issue of access to market and purchase of the vaccines that have been produced on the continent. Indeed, let me, let me step back a little bit for a bit of history here, because as far back as 2012, uh, the AU had worked on this pharmaceutical manufacturing plan for Africa, which aimed to essentially expand vaccine manufacturing and development on the continent in anticipation of a crisis just like this, but its implementation has been haphazard at best. What went wrong? Um, uh, this is something that um, uh, is, based, is, is based on um, how uh, continental agreements are implemented by our member states uh, uh, on the continent of Africa. And um, usually during a crisis is when the gaps um, uh, are seen. And this COVID-19 uh, crisis has clearly shown us that uh, that particular uh, pharmaceutical manufacturing plan needed to have been implemented before. We are identifying where what went wrong. We will fix it, and then we will use that plan to ensure that the next outbreak and the next pandemic uh, is going to uh, come when we are ready. This time, we were not um, uh, based on the plan not being fully implemented, but the next one, we have learned our lessons and we will fix it. Indeed. So IP is something you mentioned a little earlier, um, and it's often been cited as a problem when it comes to getting access to medicines. And we're seeing that now um, with COVID. Um, but this is a two part question. First of all, um, how difficult was it to get access to this IP to essentially convince Johnson & Johnson, for example, look, license the tech to us, we can manufacture it here. But also B, isn't it well past time for African countries to be investing in their own pharmaceutical research and to start owning a part of this intellectual property as well? Um, starting with your second question, the simple answer is yes. Um, we are uh, passing on the message to our member states on the continent that we must invest in r and if, if we are not doing research and developing our own um, intellectual property-based uh, uh, um, uh, health products, then we cannot be competitive in the market. Um, so there is need to urgently expand the investment in R&D for health products. And there is a um, very urgent need to expand um, production facilities. Because if you have a product, it has to be manufactured at scale for the market. So we need facilities that can be able to do that manufacturing. To your first question, um, accessing licenses uh, to be able to manufacture on the continent requires negotiation. And this is what has happened with uh, uh, the Johnson & Johnson uh, uh, case. Indeed, that one is manufacturing under contract. It is not uh, a fully uh, licensed uh, agreement. What we are looking for and what we are pushing at the World Trade Organization is for licenses to be released so that our companies here on the continent can be able to manufacture under license and that way uh, they can be able to um, adjust the costs uh, uh, to um, the government when they buy. If you're manufacturing under contract, you don't have um, control over the, event, the final price, but if you're manufacturing under license, you can be able to adjust uh, the pricing. And that is our preferred mode where licenses are released to manufacturers in Africa, and we can be able to produce at scale of the market uh, that we intend to target, which is Africa. Indeed, I'd love to continue this conversation, but we are running out of time. Dr. Ahmed Ogwal, Deputy Director at the Africa Centers for Disease Control, thank you very much for your time this evening.